Hey, my name is Chris. Thank you for tuning in. I wanted to talk today about cerclage placement and the types of sutures used. Over the past few weeks, I got to place a couple of cerclages and different providers wanted to use different sutures. And that got me wondering and looking up different research articles. But to kind of go over the basics, the three main indications for why someone's going to receive a cerclage are history indicated, ultrasound indicated, and exam indicated. For history indicated, if the patient had a prior second trimester loss due to painless cervical dilation, then they're indicated for history indicated cerclage. For ultrasound indicated, this is a prior preterm birth. Um, before 34 weeks of gestation due to painless cervical dilation and has an ultrasound finding of a cervical length under 25 millimeters, then they're indicated for that. And then the last one is exam indicated and that's simply in the setting of a patient that comes in with painless cervical dilation before 24 weeks of gestation, then they can be candidate for a cerclage placement. There's other types of cerclage methods as well, so McDonald's, Sirodkar, and abdominal, and I'm going to be really only focusing on the McDonald's cerclage. When we get into the McDonald's cerclage, for whatever indication, you can use different sutures. So this gets pretty complicated, but the suture types that you can use for this, and this is the whole point of this video, is really Mersaline or proline and I guess Ethabond as well, but really I'm going to be focusing on Mersaline and proline. So I want to ask, is there superiority in using a certain type of suture material for cerclage placement, regardless of whether it's going to be history, ultrasound, or exam indicated? So here are the three main papers that I was able to kind of help elucidate whether or not there was superiority. And I personally had used Mersaline tape, which is like a thick five millimeter suture. Like it's pretty thick. It's non-absorbable, it's braided, um, it's used, but I also use proline, which is also a monofilament, but also non-absorbable. So between those two sutures, the three main papers that I was looking at was, one of them was a Bergella paper in 2012, one of them was a Stafford paper in 2019, and then a Batter B paper slash like abstract that was done in 2018. So to kind of go from Stafford's paper first, and I actually uh, interviewed with Stafford a long time ago during my like residency application, so I remember her a lot, but her paper was really cool and it was looking at patients. It was end of 109, single center study, and what it was looking at simply was, was there superiority in the suture placement? And they found that there was no difference in the type of suture use, and they used Mersaline tape, Mersaline braided, as well as proline. And there was no difference, regardless of history, exam, ultrasound, it was not significant. Their N was small, so maybe if they used a higher N, and I think they said around like 300 or 400 patients, then they would get a high enough N to maybe potentially find a difference, a significant difference of 5%. But there was no difference in the type of suture. So, so far, they're both equal. Then we can jump to Bergella's paper. Bergella's paper was 2012, and their paper was looking at patients with ultrasound indicated. So they don't care about history or exam, but they looked at only ultrasound indicated. And they actually looked at a lot of different subtypes of whether they wanted to use one suture or two suture type, two sutures. But for the simplicity of this video, what they found was there was no superiority between Mersaline or Proline in regarding for patients with ultrasound indicated cerclages. So, so far there's two non-benefits. And the third paper I wanted to talk about was Batterby's paper in 2018. This was an AJOG paper, retrospective, N of 203. And what it was looking at was different cerclage indications and suture types. And what they found was that when you subdivide, and you can found for all the variables, but when you subdivide the indications for cerclage, thicker suture led to less preterm birth for indications of exam and ultrasound. But when you looked at history indicated, there was no decreased preterm birth before 34 weeks compared to the thickness of the suture. They also assessed neonatal outcomes, and they showed that there was decreased amount of choreo as well as NICU admission in sutures that were thicker versus thinner when doing cerclage placement. So looking at all the papers, you can agree that there is no benefit in using a thicker or thinner suture regarding history indicated cerclages. The differences come back when you're doing exam or ultrasound indicated, and there's varying data on this, so there needs to be more projects and more papers to help elucidate this that require higher ends. At the end of the day, I think really probably it's a provider preference. So if the provider is more comfortable using a thinner suture, then this should be used. And if they require using a thicker suture, then they should be doing that as well. For me, when they use a thicker suture, it's a lot stronger of a pull through that you have to do in order to get it out, where the proline is a little bit easier for me to use kind of when I'm doing my cerclage placement. But 
at the end of the day, I'm still learning and it was fun to kind of research all this data. And I hope this helps kind of elucidate the complexity of sutures in cerclages. Thanks for watching.